nanotechnology. Once thought of as being purely science fiction, nano-enhanced products have already begun to invade our daily lives. From phones, to solar panels, to possibly even the t-shirt that you're wearing, all of these products have been enhanced with nanotech in the recent years. But what is it about nanotechnology that makes it so attractive to a knowledgeable consumer? Does it accomplish something that larger technology can't? Or is it a cheaper option for designing a product? In this video, we will be looking at the advantages of nanotech. Nanotech is any tech design on a scale from 1 to 100 billionths of a meter. Due to their small size, several scaling laws act upon nanomaterials in order to give them unique properties not seen in any other material. For example, nanoparticles gain an increased surface to volume ratio as their size decreases when compared to their bulk counterparts. This is an attractive feature for manufacturers that want to increase the efficiency of their chemical reactions by increasing the surface area of the reactant. This increase in efficiency can affect billions of dollars in industries such as the oil and battery industries. Nanoparticles also become more quantized as they scale down. We all remember from chemistry class that electrons can jump around to various energy bands while gaining or losing energy. In bulk materials, many energy bands exist and energy levels become continuous. However, nanomaterials only have a limited number of energy bands with larger band gaps in between. Therefore, electrons absorb or emit a larger discrete amount of energy when excited. And we can change a nanoparticle's size to very specifically alter the band gap between the balance band and the conduction band. This can lead to tuning a particle's optical and electrical properties to very specific standards and has allowed for the creation of devices such as a single electron transistor and more efficient lasers. Furthermore, Forces such as gravity become less and less effective at the nanoscale, eventually being overcome by van der Waals and electrostatic forces. Combined, these effects can lead to a high strength to weight ratio and have applications in areas such as the aerospace and construction industries. Although other properties also exist for nanomaterials, the overall advantages include more efficiency, less cost, and new innovations due to their unique properties. To highlight these advantages, let's take a look at a study published in 2017 by the American Institute of Physics that explores how nanofluids can boost solar energy conversion in a hybrid photovoltaic thermal collector. A photovoltaic thermal collector is a device that captures both light and heat energy from the sun. In a traditional photovoltaic cell, light is converted into electrical energy by exciting the electrons in a material. However, most light energy causes electrons to be excited far above the conduction band. Therefore, only a limited amount of the electromagnetic spectrum is converted to electricity and the rest of the energy is released as heat. Light and heat capturing photovoltaic thermal collectors have been produced in the past. However, the thermal collecting part would only work efficiently at high heat, which in turn caused the light collecting part to be less efficient. Very expensive solutions to this problem do exist. However, researchers at the University of New South Wales in Sydney, Australia have found a cheaper solution in the form of optical nanofluids. Nanofluids are nanoparticles suspended in a fluid. Optical nanofluids are normally made up of metallic nanoparticles that experience a phenomenon known as plasmon resonance. A plasmon is the cloud of free electrons in a metal. When a light photon strikes a nanoparticle, the plasmon will oscillate at a certain frequency. As mentioned previously in this video, by changing the nanoparticle size, we can change the energy level at which the plasmon resonates. Therefore, 
we can tune what light energy we want the nanoparticles to absorb and what light energy we want them to transmit. Therefore, if a specifically designed nanofluid layered on top of a photovoltaic cell only transmitted the light that could be converted into electricity by the photovoltaic cell, the excess light would be absorbed by the nanoparticles and released as heat into the surrounding fluid, which then in turn could be collected as useful energy. Thus, the photovoltaic and thermal components could remain separate to increase the energy collector's efficiency while lowering its overall cost. Although, the researchers did take note that a nanoparticle's melting temperature decreases as the size decreases. Therefore, nanoparticles would normally melt and aggregate in the device such as this. However, these researchers had the genius idea of casing the nanoparticles in oxide shells to prevent aggregation even if the particle melts. As seen throughout this video, Nanotechnology offers many advantages over regular materials, but their small size can also have disadvantages, as seen by the nanoparticles having a lower melting temperature in the thermal energy collector. Beyond this, nanotechnology also has challenges in other areas, such as efficient bulk production, cooling and electronics, environmental and health problems, and public trust issues. But like the melting problem in our example, these challenges can all be overcome with a bit of genius. Who will be the next genius to solve these challenges? Who knows? It might just be you. Thanks for watching.